This is one of the one inch picture tubes on the tiny trinoscope. Over here you can see the adjusting screw. There's another one on the other side that lets us move the tube left and right. This screw and this screw and this strap allow us to press the CRT down on some foam and to adjust the rotation. And we do this for the blue tube and for the red tube. And the green tube is permanently attached with glue. So it never moves. We adjust the other two tubes to match it. Now these are full vacuum tube, cathode ray tubes, little tiny guys. This connector on the side brings 3000 volts up to the tube and charges it up inside. The electron gun in this neck here generates a beam and these coils of wire act as an electromagnet to move the beam back and forth and up and down. This is the prism that takes the image from the red tube and reflects it out the front. Takes the blue tube image and reflects it out the front. The green tube passes straight through. And the three images appear to be combined and produce a full color picture. Now, looking down into these gaps, you can see I've placed some red plastic over the red tube. There's a green plastic filter on the green tube, hard to see, and the blue tube gets the same treatment. Now if we go behind the tubes here, you can see they have that standard bluish white color of the P4 phosphor used on black and white televisions. This is a standard standardized phosphor. Clifford Benham, who builds mechanical color televisions and publishes on the web, recommended some filters by Roscoe that are normally used as theatrical lighting gels. And if you look in my Goldmark One project on my website www.labguysworld.com you can see uh, the type of Roscoe filters I used if you go to the page that covers the construction of the color wheel. Back to the trinoscope I got these monitors out of a color TV camera and mounted the tube myself here and mounted the board using these these rubber washers that are flexible and I squeeze them between a nut and a bolt and a washer and pinch the edge of the circuit board it does no damage to the circuit board and it holds it very firmly um, these circuit boards used to sit inside the plastic case in a couple of slots so they're were never any mounting holes that I could use. I took the natural connector that came with it here and made a cable that joins the color matrix circuit board which is a subject for another video. You'll note that on these circuit boards there are three LEDs. When the picture tube was originally in the case with the board the picture tube pointed this way out the front and the LEDs were along the side of it and would indicate that you were recording or that you had low light and color balance. I don't use the LEDs. In the connector you'll see three cutoff wires. Those were the wires that lit up the LEDs. In a viewfinder we only need three wires plus 12 volts for power and ground and video input and the video is the standard kind of video that comes out the yellow jack on most consumer products and so there you have it 
the tiny trinoscope shown at Lab Guys World and built by me, Richard Deal. And I built this in March and uh, April of 2014. And even to my own surprise and delight, I built this from nothing in only three weeks. The tiny trinoscope.